Hello, Tab Nation. It's Tom. And yes, my next few videos are probably going to have some fun filters just because I got a new program that I'm having a lot of fun with. And uh, yeah, I'm just playing with them. So yeah, these are my eyes. So yeah, today we're going to be talking about um, GUI resizing and having your controls resized with the resize of your GUI. So let me show you what I mean by that. So I have created a IDE for AHK completely in it called AHK Playground. You should definitely check out those videos and download it, give it a try. It's, I'm calling it alpha right now, you know, just because it got a lot of work to go. But it works pretty well. Um, you know, it can run without even saving a script. So it can run straight from the IDE. You don't even need to have it saved as a file. It works with version 1, version 2. It has all the syntax and stuff built in. Uh, so if that's something you're curious in, definitely check out those videos. So yeah. <clears throat> so you see, you know, I got everything laid out real nice. Uh, let me move it over a little bit. I got my buttons down here, my logo, uh, you know, everything. Right? So I'm going to go down here in the corner, and I'm going to grab, and I'm going to start moving it. And as you see, buttons and everything are resizing with the GUI and staying in the proper order, this proper place. Normally, if you just create a GUI and you add the ability to resize, and I move this, the buttons here would actually like disappear because uh, they would still be locked into that part of the screen while your GUI is like going like this. So you would lose focus on a lot of your stuff. So you want them to be able to move with your uh, whole thing, your whole window there. So how do I do that? So this one can be a little bit, uh, a little bit complicated. Um, it's easy to mess up a single thing and wonder like what you did, and it can be a little weird. Uh, but hopefully we can uh, at least get you on the path there. So GUI size, I have that here, and that is being called upon somewhere. Where is it? No. Where are you? We'll find that in a moment. It's being weird. So anyway, yeah, we're gonna take a look on how to do that. Um, it, it can be a bit of work, but it's not super bad. <laughs> it, it's it's a little bit. Let me find it again. Here we go. All right, so here we go. We got GUI size. So we're going to do an if statement here, and it's just if not initial size, meaning, hey, something changed. It's not the original size. Well, let's do all this stuff here. So the first thing we got to do is we got to create a GUI control git for every single control, like every element on our GUI. So we're going to do that. And uh, I'm just naming them C1, C2, etc. You can honestly name it whatever you want. I just found this to be easy. So control 1, control 2 is basically what I was going for there. We want the position. You know, we want to know what the position is. And what is it called? You know, which, which, what are we getting the position of? So here I got code string. So up in my uh, GUI, we're going to be jumping around here a lot. You know, as you can see, a lot of these have names. You know, this one's called Run. This one's called Clear. Some of them um, <clears throat> have a uh, variable name, uh, whatever, but some of them don't. And you can basically go about this two ways. You can actually use the uh, name of it. So this one's called Code String. You know, Command Search, Search. But you can also just simply just do button one, button two, button three, button four. And that's just gonna be whatever button one is that as you go down your code in your GUI, whatever one hits first, that automatically is gonna be labeled as button one. So I just kind of did a varial, <clears throat> ver a uh, few different things here, uh, just to show you the flexibility and that there's a few different ways to do it, uh, which we'll be using here in a minute. So yeah, you basically just, every time you add a new control, just make sure you add a new line of code uh, down here with your new information. You know, if I had another button, I would just call it button six and I would call it C13. 
Now, we're going to go down here. So we got the initial size. We need to kind of do some math here. We're going to do the same thing here. So first we got our GUI. And we're just doing our, uh, this is a built-in variable. So the width and the height. And that's just A underscore GUI width. GUI height. And these are built-in variables, so it's something you've never you didn't really create. It's just there automatically without you even probably knowing that. Uh, there's a lot of built-in variables. The most popular one probably is uh, clipboard. Uh, that's a built-in variable. You maybe never made it, but you can call upon it at any point, even though you never assigned it a value within the script. It's just going to be whatever is in your OS. <clears throat> So we're doing the same thing here. Uh, we're doing edit one, button one. So we're just going down with all our names that we used up here. And here's where we're gonna be kind of assigning all the uh, XY coordinates. So we got our X coordinate, C1X. So that C1 is coming from up here with that C1. And as you see, even though I said code string up here, I can switch it up down here and use edit one. So there's a lot of ways you can like really like just it's more flexible i guess i mean you should do code string this should be called code string you should really do that uh, but i'm just showing you uh how you can be a little bit flexible there uh but yeah so we're uh getting the x coordinates uh we're gonna do c1 we're gonna do x uh the y and then the width and the height of it and we're just gonna assign all these as w h c1h so yeah hopefully that makes sense like i said there's a lot of work involved every time you add a single button you have to do you got to have all this extra code you got to add real quick um but yeah so you just continue down you know button one two three four uh you know synth help here's one where i actually use the name you know that's c10x so synth help c10 yeah and then uh, down here, uh, we're just going to get like the last uh, known coordinates, uh, or not coordinates, but the last known width and height of the GUI. So we're getting like, what's the last that we know about? Uh, so when you moved it, uh, what is it now? Uh, and then, yeah, we're done there. So we're just going to put a return there, close out our uh, if statement from up here. Now, down here, we're going to do... Um, this is pretty much where it's going to actually do a lot of the work info. Um, so if the window has been minimized, we're really not doing anything. You know, it's still going to get the last, you know, width and height. Um, yeah, this window has been restored. So basically, if it's minimized, well, obviously we don't really need to do anything. But if not, boom. Go ahead and get that new information. Uh, the last none. Then we're going to see what was the change. <coughs> Sorry about that. <clears throat> so we're doing, um, we're now getting the, you know, our width and height again. We're doing this a lot. And we're going to subtract from our initial that we originally got up there. So, you know, what has the change been? You know, how much. How many pixels has the width changed? How many pixels has the height changed? And that's going to give us basically what we moved so that we can uh, use that in some math here. So we're going to go back to using another GUI control. GUI control is basically just making changes to your GUI uh, for the most part. And the one we're going to want to do is, well, we want to move it. So we're just going to use the word move. And then once again, just all your names of everything you're using here. So, like you see, once again, I can use code string, or I can use button one. Then, this gets a little long here. Uh, we're going to use a comma, blank in there on the name of that for some reason, and uh, the percent sign. Uh, so, we need to get our new uh, variable here. So, we need our new uh, width so we're doing our initial size in edit one. So like I said, code string, I could use the code string here, but I'm showing you the flexibility of how, even though it's in the same line, 
it, it's pretty flexible with allowing you to do that. So here we're getting the width. So we're doing the initial size of that plus the change. So that math that we did up here with how much did it change, we're going to add that to the initial location, size, whatever. Uh, then we're going to get the height. Does the same thing. Just make sure you're updating these in every one. So you, in these lines, it's so easy to miss this. You know, you put button one here, but then you got to remember to put it there. Then you got to remember whoa, to also put it there. So yeah, it's very easy to accidentally forget to uh, change one of these and then have it not work quite right. So like maybe your width will work, but your height won't work. Yeah. Um, so yeah, here we're getting X and Y. So we're getting the X coordinates and getting the Y coordinates because we're moving it based off whatever was changed, but based off where it was initially sized at or the initial location. I mean, you can use whatever name here you want. If you want to change it, I don't know why I use size. Should have used uh, initial location. That would have made more sense. But oh well, we're already into this video, so we're not changing it. <laughs> So yeah, just uh, basically uh, make sure you're always doing it for every single button. Because if you move it and you didn't do it for one, that button's going to disappear. Or uh, if you move it, you know, bigger, it's just going to stay and then it's probably going to overlap with something. So yeah, just make sure you're doing that. And then uh, basically the last thing we're going to be doing here is the last GUI width and the last GUI height. And then we're just getting grabbing that again. That way, when it cycles through again, it knows to check to make sure um, nothing's changed. Um, so yeah, we're, we're grabbing the GUI size quite a lot just because we need it. Because uh, we're constantly checking, did we change it? Did we change it? So yeah. Oh, here it is. Save GUI size. Oh, okay. That was another thing I did uh, on how to save the, the GUI size. So let's say the next time I open my program, I want it to be where it was last time. So I'll add that on to this video. I wasn't going to, uh, but it's so simple. So basically what I'm going to do, I have it running, I think, at every 1.5 seconds or 1500 milliseconds. Uh, obviously, you can do whatever you want. I just, I saw 1.5 as a good number. It's not going to like be going crazy with my script going constantly saving. Uh, and I feel like it's very unlikely I'm going to move my, uh, change the size of the GUI and suddenly close out within 1.5 seconds. So I thought that was a good number. Um, so yeah, save GUI size. If window is active, HK Playground, uh, in the version mode, that's just the title of my GUI. Uh, and that's just the variable with whatever version my program is in. Uh, yeah, so all we're doing is a GUI submit, no hide. You know, we still want to see it because uh, all we're just doing is grabbing information. We don't need to hide it. And then we're going to get the position. So we're going to get a few things here. We're going to get the X, the Y, the width, the height, and we want to get it from the active window, which will, because we did the uh, if window active, will be our uh, GUI. And then after that, all you do is an I and I write. I've done videos on those. So if you want that, you know, just to d dive into that. Uh, I and I write is just a great, it's a file type. It's just a great way to save uh, variables uh, to be called upon later. Uh, and it's just going to do I and I, it's going to take that X that we got up here, the Y, the width, height. Uh, these are just, uh, you know, where it's being saved to, what's it called, uh, and that. So I'm not going to jump too much into that. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much really all we're doing and then you know when i run my program uh at the beginning of my script this is pretty much at the very beginning so this auto runs before anything else happens it's going to do an i and i read instead and it's going to re-grab my last known x y width and height and it's going to go ahead and resize it and then open my gui for me uh later down the script uh, so that's really nice. Uh, you know, all programs pretty much do that. You open Chrome, minima or uh, you know this size versus this size, and close it, open it. It's going to be back to this size or that size uh, based off that. So that's what that's doing. So 
just throwing that out there. Uh, yeah, uh, that one can be a little bit weird, complicated. Uh, it's easy to miss a variable uh, by accident. Uh, so yeah, let me know what you think. Uh, if you guys have any questions, I'm sure there'll be a lot of questions on this one. Uh, but yeah, I'll see you all on the next video, which I believe will probably be another GUI video. So stay tuned. See you all.